Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ankush. In this lecture, we are going to learn about two very important concepts in the SPA. We called it as a transformation and the actions. Whenever you are going for an interview of SPA, obviously there will be a question on transformation and action. In this lecture, we will try to understand what is transformation and what is action and when we can use that. Let's see practically. Let's say you have one RDD is there. And this RDD, it is stored some of the information related to the CSV file. Let's say that we have a employee.csv that we load it into the RDD. Now this RDD store the information or store the data of this emp.csv. Now on this RDD, let's say you want to perform some sort of operation. So obviously the operation we called it as a transformation and action transformation and action so there are two type of operation that you can perform on the rdd we call it as a transformation and action now what is transformation in transformation what will happen let's say you have rdd this is your parent rdd on this parent rdd where you load your data you have your data loaded into this rdd now let's say you want to do some sort of operation like filter so what will happen whenever you are calling any transformation like filter okay it is going to generate new rdd so that, that will be rdd2 let's say you are performing any other new transformation again it is going to generate a new rdd that is called rdd3 you can give the name of your rdd as per your wish that's not a problem but you need to understand one thing that whenever you are calling any operation like a transformation a new rdd is going to be generated so you can go to this parent rdd parent rdd will create a new rdd and after that again it is going to create a new rdd as soon as you call the transformation so we have a multiple transformations are there like map flat map map, map partition filter sample union group by key reduce by key many other partitions are there now this transformation are again divided into the two more part based on their usability so if i say there is a transformation this transformation get divided into the two part one we called it as a narrow transformation and here we called it as a wide transformation now what is narrow transformation in narrow transformation we have a function called map flat map and many other functions are there but map and flat map are quietly used and in white transformation we have group by key and reduce by key apart from this many others are there so we have reduce by key and group by key now how to decide whether it is a narrow transformation or white transformation so in narrow transformation what will happen all of your data will stored into the same partition only so the number of input equals to number of output and there will not be no shuffling of data no shuffling so obviously if the shuffling is not there there will not be a much load on the hadoop cluster so narrow transformation is basically a one-to-one -one mapping okay basically a one-to-one -one mapping let's say you created one rdd again it is going to create another new rdd but in white transformation what will happen if you take the example of reduce by key or group by key your data will not be stored into the single partition it will be split into the number of partition let's say your data is available here here and here it is there on different different partition now when you want to do a reduce by key or group by key basically your data will get shuffled from one node to another node so it is getting shuffled and when there is a shuffling of data huge amount of load will be there on our Hadoop cluster. So try to minimize the use of white transformation as much as you can and always go with the narrow transformation like map and flat map. So there are two type of transformation we have just understood narrow transformation and white transformation. Now one more thing about the transformation is the transformation will not get executed unless and until you are not calling a action what are the actions we have like collect 
let's say you have one rdd okay you have one rdd rdd1 this rdd is stored something data like emp.csv okay then you call your filter operation when you call filter operation it will create another rdd rdd2 now if you are calling collect this collect is actually your action so unless and until you are not calling this action this filter operation will not be executed and this is a behavior of a spark we called it as a lazy evaluation lazy so spark rdd is a lazy evaluation now normally let me tell you one more example let's say you are having a multiple transformation like rdd1 it is creating another rdd2 then it is creating rdd3 again it is creating rdd4 and after that you are calling your actions and these are all your transformations so internally your spark will create the execution plan and that logical execution plan we are calling it as dag <coughs> we are calling it as dag dag direct acyclic graph so basically it is internally your logical execution plan when you are doing the transformation there is a chances that some of the transformation are not at all needed but you have written it into the code so it will try to remove this transformation while executing the query and that is the behavior we called it as a lazy evaluation by using this dag by any chance if one of your rdd got missed due to the due to some network issue or anything there is a feature we called it as a fault or run so what it will do it will recalculate all of your transformation and it will execute the actions this is all about the transformation and the action in spark there are many things are there in the transformation and action but that is not possible to cover up into the single video so if you are looking for spark training hadoop training definitely you can contact me all my details are there in the description section thank you so much for watching this video please do like subscribe and share this channel